Broadcasting live from the Vegas Video Network studios, just steps from the Las Vegas Strip, it's Talk Tales! And now our host, she's our very own kaleidoscope of talent! What? It's Kelly Clinton! Wow, that is craziness in the studio right now. Hi, welcome to Talk Tales on the Vegas Video Network. Some people call it VVN. I am your host. My name is Kelly Clinton, hyphen Holmes. Why does it always get quieter when I say my name? You scream for talk tales like this. Yeah. Talk tales. You scream for Vegas Video Network. Yeah. And I'm Kelly. <laughs> that wasn't forced at all. Nobody made anybody do that. OK. All right. You know why there's pandemonium in the studio? Do I? Tell us more, Kelly Clinton. Hyphen Holmes. <laughs> there is a gorgeous lady in the studio who not enough people get to actually see, if you know what I'm saying. You know why? 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 Because she is like a, like a number one ta uh, radio uh, DJ personality uh, on 94.1, Mark and Mercedes in the morning. I'm not talking about how beautiful Lady Mark is. <laughs> All right, so we've eliminated Mark. Not completely Mark, if you're watching. I mean, right now, who's here? Mercedes! Woo! Gorgeous! From Mark and Mercedes in the morning, and that's JC, too. That's why there's a third guy in that picture right there. But you see the lady in the middle? She is here right now. She is a long, tall drink of water, too. Isn't she, guys? Yeah. Yes, the guys are like, I'd like your autograph. Here I go with the man voice again. Is there anywhere I can, I listen to you every day. I, they talk and I go, eh, hey, but then when you talk, I'm all, oh, oh. You're the, well, she's here today and I, I am, <laughs> and I am so excited. I mean, we actually just actually met officially today. We'll talk more. But before we meet Mercedes from 90, <laughs> Kelly, <laughs> nothing. You see, you see. Uh, no respect. Okay, from 94.1, Mark and Mercedes in the morning, this is my radio voice. We're going to meet some other people <laughs> in the studio right now. We have an orchestra of one. He's been gone. He is back. There has been no bow tie in the room for two weeks. Ladies and gentlemen, our orchestra, Mr. Kenny Davidson, the Talk Tales Orchestra. Back, baby. Oh, Lord. Won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz? My friends all drive Porsches. I must make a man. I'm sorry we have no more time for you, Kenny. <laughs> that was a tribute to Mercedes. That was very sweet. <laughs> very, very sweet. But Leave I'm it to the producer to give me an idea of what to do. You know, he's a great singer, Mercedes. You know, maybe someday you can have him on the show. He's headlining over at the... At the Tuscany. Every Friday nights. Every week? Friday night. And this week we have Kirsten Kirishi. It's her birthday what party. What did you say? We have Kirsten Kirishi. Kazunai. Who sang. <laughs> who sang? She sang backup for you at your show when we did this. Kirsten. I was yes. just kidding around, Kirsten. It's just, first of all, you know, as you know, not the easiest name to say in the world. No. But you are fabulous. Back to Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> She yeah. is terrific. She so is. She's our special guest. It's, uh, she, it's her birthday this week, so we're doing, she's doing her own night. Oh, happy birthday, yeah. Kirsten. So and, and then you're doing and Don't Tell Mamas. Don't Tell Mamas twice a week, Wednesdays I and see. Saturdays. Kenny's such a great singer and a player, a uh, great performer, singer. And you, are you coming tonight to the bootlegger for my open mic? You could lie right now. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Great. We start at 9 o'clock. I'll cool. see you there. I'll see you Welcome there. Welcome home, son. It's good to be here. Okay. And now I introduce the creator the producer of Creator. the Vegas Video Network, Mr. Scott Whitney, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, baby. And Jacob Cannon, part of our family right here. Can't do it without you. Scott? Yes. How are you? 
I am amazing. Why? Because I am the creator. <laughs> Apparently, and I feel pretty good about that. I, I thought maybe you wouldn't be here today because you had your pool party well, this weekend, right? Here's the deal. The best thing in the world, devil's margaritas. Ah. The best thing in the world. Does the anybody know what that is? I'll tell world? you right now. So, but, and the best thing to use to make them is called a Margaritaville blender. Have you seen these things? Uh, Holy no, crap, a moto is the greatest thing in the world. Here's the devil's margarita, 666. Uh oh. Six, right? Makes sense. All right. Six parts beer, uh -huh. six parts tequila, uh -huh. six parts uh, frozen limeade. Now we just double that because it's easier. <laughs> so what you do is you take the frozen limeade uh -huh. and you take the vodka and you, or the, the uh, tequila, you pour it in the limeade thing, 12 ounces, perfect, pour it into a blender thing, and then you get your beer, mix it up, put it over ice, blend, blend, blend. It is the best margarita ever. Okay, I think it needs a new name. Nope. I think it's uh, Kill Liver is what we'll call it. Let's call no, it, give me it, a Kill Liver and uh, get me to the hospital. I will tell you this, um, I don't think it, ha oh. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to warn him, I tried to warn him. Scott, all right, well too bad we have uh, to no, go on no, with I the show Chevy anyway. <laughs> all right. Are you okay? Oh, Jesus criminy. <laughs> you hurt yourself. That Chevy Chase nonsense is for the birds, right. man. Pratt, Pratt Falls Ow. are not to be messed with. I think you I might have broke a hip. You got to get some cushion. Well, I'm sorry we couldn't make it to the party. Do you, would you like to know why? Okay, I'll tell you. Clint and I yes. were in San Francisco. Uh, oh, is it beautiful there? It's oh. absolutely gorgeous there. Um, and Clint was playing at the Nico at Feinstein's uh, Jazz Club, and he... It was so great. Sounds very He was fancy. terrific as usual and had a great turnout. And um, even people from that cruise that I told you about a, a month or so ago actually said, they said, we'll be there. And they showed up like a group of 10. Wow. So, no, yeah, I'm telling you. He's got he, cruise groupies. He's got all kinds of people all over. Once they see him, they say, we must see him again. I want cruise groupies. Okay, well, you, have you been on a cruise? I'd rather not talk about that. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like New Orleans again. All right, back to the story. So we went to a few great places. Have you ever, uh, have you been to San Francisco, Scott? I used to live in the Bay Area. Okay. Ha have you ever heard of the Zuni Cafe? Let's go with yes. Okay, so <laughs> it's this great place, and there we were. We actually had a seat by the glass, the big glass window, and, uh, and I could kind of sense something behind me, and, I, and there was a gentleman... Uh, on a bicycle with lots of things tied to it um, that hadn't taken a shower in a long time. Mm -hmm. And and that's, I'm not judging him at all. Nothing wrong with that. But what happened was he actually was behind me kissing the window. Oh. Right where my head was. So he was kissing your head. He was actually, in his mind. Right. He was actually kissing my head and he licked the window. Oh, that's I think this so is something from hot. Mark. Yeah. Hot, I mean, sick terrible. And, and you know what? That, it's funny because I actually was flattered. Is that wrong? <laughs> Is that wrong? That. Anyway, so that, I think Mark and Mercedes, you know, you guys talk about all these crazy subjects. I think maybe we should say, is it wrong to not be offended by that? I, I think it's morning, okay. I think it's cool, too. But another weird thing happened. He I don't know. Been, by the way, he could have been a reality TV guy. Yeah, that's true. And it could have uh, been, if what you'd have would you out do? And give him a kiss back, you might have won a million dollars. Well, I didn't want to lead him on. Fair enough. Um, you know, Fair been enough. there, done that. But anyway, uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what that means. But also, wait, I'm going to, you know how you always say if you're going to have notes, Scott, you say, look at them? Yes. A couple of Holy other crap, things. what are those? These are my glasses oh. from Italy, but I don't want to drop I didn't know you were going to look at them with those. <laughs> okay, I don't actually need them for this because I wrote this big. Do you guys remember? Now, this goes back before Mercedes time, I'm sure. But do you remember when the movie Purple Rain came out? Do I? Well, do you remember uh, uh, Morris, Morris Day? Morris Day, sure. And the time? I was totally on our flight. Really? On our way to San Francisco. I don't even know if Clint noticed him. But I walked by as I was getting, going to our seats, and I saw this gentleman with a, a little teeny mustache and a really cool hairdo, and I thought, that's funny, it looks like Morris Day from the time. We got off the plane, and then all of the other guys that were with the band joined him in, in the baggage area, and he pointed to his luggage, and they went and got... No, that, none of that happened. But so I figured, I go, that looks like, and everyone said, that is, that is, Did that he do is. that really cool dance? Yeah, Kenny, do you know it? I don't know if he knows it. No, I think that's the that's other one, Chris. but... 
That's Prince, but it's everybody. Hey, I can't do that with my arm flab. No, I won't do it. You do it. Put the camera on here, everybody. Wow, that's not good. Oh, my goodness. Back Holy to crap. me. Holy crap. I need to get back, back on the diet. Okay, one more thing I want to talk about before we get serious into, you know, I'm going to get into my Barbara Walters mode. No, I'm kidding, Mercedes. Like, I, no. You're going to make me like, cry? What do you feel when you, no, I won't do it. But I wanted to say about, I have a prop. You know how I love props? Yeah. First of all, has anyone seen my rubber chicken? No. <laughs> I wanted Mercedes to sign my rubber chicken, but I, could, I couldn't find it anywhere. And I thought maybe it was here. No, Scott? No, ma'am. Nowhere? OK. Um, my husband is, is a wonderful man, not a snob in any way. Nope. He's over there going, uh-oh. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. a lot of times, and he's not alone in this area, people will buy uh, name brand products rather than the store brand, right? Say, like at CVS, sure. you know, can you know, give me some Advil, you know, and then I see the, the bottle next to it that has the same ingredients, but I think to myself, Clint doesn't really believe all those ingredients. Are, I'll get the name brand. Well, I decided that on some cleaning products, which he'll never see himself, oh. that maybe I could go to like the dollar store thing and buy some things like that. So I go in and I get these, which I don't know if you soap all can you see that soap pads, right? You see it on the box. Yep. And I thought for a dollar, why would I spend whatever? Clint will never know that this is the Buddy's brand, <laughs> 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 right? That, right. So I get them and I put them away, and of course I too never see them again. <laughs> and today Clint went to get something under the kitchen sink, and and the box came up, but I was on the other side of the counter, so this. Is what I saw. <laughs> Can you see that? Do you see what that says? I do. And then here, and he's like, well, maybe that's just French for <laughs> that, right? So I thought to myself, thank goodness this product got in the right hands because if, say, perhaps Miss Utah, USA, <laughs> got this, she could be uh, in a fast taxi to the hospital right that's now. That's right. Okay, so I, this is another subject that I think Mercedes should bring up tomorrow morning and get those ratings, except there's no camera there. Okay, this is not the way I wanted to cut to commercial. I could fix that. Before we have a special guest. So no more talk of Brillo pads, no more talk of trips to San Francisco. We're gonna learn, we're gonna get inside the mind of one of the greatest, most beautiful DJs we have in Las Vegas for Mark and Mercedes in the morning. Right after this on Talk Tales, Mercedes. Oh, I need to come up with something funny to oh, say. Geez. Three, two, one. Wow. <laughs> but the co-host. Really, you, I have to say watch it. Well, we're, I'm doing. That's how you do it. You better really? watch it. There okay. you go. I got it. We? We're, we, we are the odds couple. Hi, my name is Scott Pritchard. And I am Anthony Padilla. You're watching the Vegas Video Network. You are. You are. We are, too. Once again, once again, I scared the guest away before they were ready to come on. <laughs> now, nah, she's still here, and she looks absolutely gorgeous. She should be on television all the time. She's so beautiful. From Mark and Mercedes in the Morning, uh, 94.1, uh, The Mix. Yes. Mercedes is here. Please welcome her. How gorgeous are you? Oh, thank you. I can say the same about you. Well, wow. no, I don't want you to do that. <laughs> you're gorgeous. No, you're gorgeous. <laughs> no, you, you are. are. <laughs> and the yellow dress, good choice. I think your producer's mad that I wore yellow. Why, why, why? He's like, ah, this microphone, I don't know where no, I'm going to hide this. Uh. <laughs> it, no, no, it's not about Mercedes. So to give me crap, isn't it, Mercedes? <laughs> but, but you Scott, said I could give him crap, right? Absolutely. Okay, oh, did yeah, I say that in the email? Me that. I'm Jeez. so sorry. But I don't think it's about the yellow. I think it's about he was afraid to, you know, maybe get security called on himself because there was no easy way. Well, I can tell get... him, you know, lower, lower, lower. He just stopped. <laughs> I don't know. Just like I'm home. Kidding. If I might say, I was acquitted. <laughs> Anyway, you look absolutely gorgeous Thank and you. you picked the perfect dress. Thank you for having me. This is so cool. I've been watching episodes Have of Talk Have you been Tales. watching them? You're amazing. I mean, Thank really, you're doing such a good job on this. Shut up, Scott. <laughs> Shut up. 
Go on. I'm serious. This is a great show. I'm so excited to be a part of it. Wow. It's a fun show, and I and I I'm so excited when Jerry Jones helped us get in contact with you, and 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 that's why you're here today. And nobody gets to see enough of you in person because obviously on radio you're heard and not seen so much. But you are so beautiful. Oh, that's this is makeup. I'm telling you, ah! <laughs> not, uh, the things are not as they appear. They are, this is not an illusion. No, this it, is the real deal. It's really I I like it that way because you don't have to go into work all dolled up. I can go in. Do you? Uh, well, do you I, do the hat and the no makeup? Actually, I'm lying. I do get dressed up. See, because, <laughs> because there's so many things to do after the fact, and and you know, I try yeah. to go out and you know you have meetings, you have appearances, you try to you know go to the schools and help out there or whatever oh, yeah. and you know you don't want to scare the little kids when you show up <laughs> at least I don't want to so I can completely relate I am a person who sleeps in their eyeliner just in case of fire yeah you want to look good for the fire right? man. they're hot they'll be like we don't know who you are you don't actually live here no it's me it really is me uh, who's gonna get saved first the good-looking person or the bad exactly <laughs> the cat or I'm you I'm joking I'm joking <laughs> She's kidding, <laughs> listeners and viewers. I know, complaints. She's Here we go. She's kidding. No, but uh, I, you know, I'm interested in the, I always think, I always think, oh, maybe someday, I've done some radio, but not as a regular job like you. Every morning, you are up at what time to get ready? You start at 6 on the radio. Right. My alarm goes off at 3.30. Uh, what? I know, but I, that doesn't mean I get up. It just goes <laughs> off. Um, I, I think I get up right, you know, a little before four, and there's a lot that I have to catch up on as far as, you know, what happened overnight, news, entertainment stories, uh, topic ideas. So it takes me a while to prep in the morning. A lot of it we do at night, but then I get to I get to the studio about 5.30 and get ready to go on okay. there. Okay, so, boy, that's, doesn't that... Doesn't that oh. Clint and I are setting our alarm for the next day at 3.30 in the morning. <laughs> Just try it. See how you like it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is there coffee involved? Oh, are yes. You a coffee Massive drinker? amounts. Yes, definitely. Yeah? I am you, a fan of coffee. Do you do sure. the fancy coffee? No, I, I have the Keurig machine, the yeah. little K-cups. I love yes. those. those. Yes, are, like, we have amazing. fans of that. Oh, yay we for want Keurig. that, too. Um, and, and so I think I have three of those a morning. And not, you know, just three cups, not like three <laughs> but, um, it's yeah. It, that's pretty much how I wake up in the morning. Now, how do, the whole household? I know you, you're a mom. Yes. And a wife and a mom, and you have two beautiful daughters. Yes, right? I do. How do, does the whole household shut down at like 8 p.m.? Or here's the it? scary thing: I don't go to bed until about 11 o'clock at night, okay. so I get zero sleep. I catch up on the weekends, though. That's that's really my husband's awesome because he'll say you need a nap, like, just like <laughs> I'm a kid. And, and so I'll go, and I'll catch up, and then I'm good to go. Um, but, yeah, I, I, we stay up. I stay up to watch the news, make sure I know what's going on right. before I go to bed at night. And so, yeah, there's not so a lot So there's of a lot of prep involved because yeah. you're on, on for, like, four hours, right? Right. I and mean, actually on the air. You're working a lot more than that. But you're on for four hours. Right, but it's a, a whole other job when you are off the air. And, like, your whole life is prep basically. And, and you know when you talk about going to San Francisco with Clint and, and the, the little things that happen throughout the day, you think, wow, this would be a good story to I tell. I could use or, this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is a topic. And so, yeah, I, in, my, um, in my iPhone, I have a little notepad where I mm -hmm. just say, oh, you know, this happened today and I type that in so I have it for the next day and I don't forget it. So. Now, you've been on with, with Mark uh, for 15 years? 16 years. Well, yeah. It's That's been a marriage. A long time. It That's is. A marriage. He's like my second husband. He really is. Um, and, and he's great. I, I really feel like he's my big brother, honestly. Mm -hmm. He's really taught me a lot, and he is so supportive of me, and he's just, he's a really good guy. I so really you started him. together in Colorado. Colorado. Yes, That's where you're from, we right? did. I was actually uh, interning at a radio station in Denver. Going to college, I was a junior, and uh, they said, hey, do you want to work part-time after my internship was over? I said, sure, that'd be fine, make some money while I'm going to school. And one thing led to another. They kept moving me up. I went from intern to promotions department to receptionist, and then to morning show on a temporary basis while they were looking for someone who really did that for a so living. you didn't plan on being on the radio? No. You that's not what you were studying for? Uh, no, be, I was going to be a pharmacist. 
believe it well, or not. Well, that's like the same thing. It's the exact same thing. It really is. Is that so? Yeah, mm-hmm. that, and that was by my father. He wanted me to have a good, solid job, and <laughs> I really had no interest. My grades reflected it, mm-hmm. and uh, once I got into the radio side of things, I thought, this is something I could do, and um, it just it worked out. Mar- they paired Mark and I together, and... I've known him longer than I've known my husband. I mean, it's wow. just been a long, <laughs> long time. Yeah. Is that weird for your husband? Uh, Is he like, Mark, 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 Mark? I, th- I think he loves it because he he's it. got backup. You know? <laughs> <laughs> if, uh, it's like they're two against one, so it's, it's all good in his mind, yeah. Okay, so, so who moved out here first? Was it Mark and, and started on radio, or you both? No, we oh, came you already out said as that. a you team. You just said that. Yeah. You came out as a team. Yep. And, and you've been at this station the for whole? for 16 years. 16 yeah. years. It's it's amazing. We we really thought it would be a two or three year thing, right. but uh, they kept asking us to stay, and we loved the town. We didn't want to leave, so it's it's really been a blessing. Okay, it's been great. on your show, I've been listening uh, lately, okay. and you also have a, a kind of a third partner on air with you, JC. JC. Yes. He's the producer. But he's also on the show with you. He right? is. He is our right-hand man. He, this show would not be possible without this guy. He is incredible. I just, I love him to death. And, yeah, he's, sometimes he's our, our whipping boy. Sometimes he's <laughs> our best friend. But he is the glue that holds the show together. He's a you great guy. Do you hear that, JC? <laughs> Do you hear the love? That, right? As Scott is saying, that's what he is. He's here. The glue on our liver is what Scott is. <laughs> yes. I heard about that drink, man. That sounds brutal. That's some serious drinking. My goodness. I know. That's good So stuff. we mix this and then with, with that, this and then with that. We put your dress in there, everything. <laughs> and we mix it up. Now, there's no drinking on your show, right? No. We, one time, I remember when we first came to town for, it was a Memorial Day weekend. Um, we were trying to do a you know, don't drink and drive. Right. Uh, s- spot, and we showed how many drinks it would take for me to get drunk on the air. Oh, and just you? Just so people knew, you know, you have to be careful. Don't oh. drink and drive. Two beers, that was it, and I was over the blood alcohol, Is the legal so? blood alcohol level. I, I didn't eat breakfast or anything, and it was 6 <laughs> o'clock in the morning, but I had to well, call my husband, my boyfriend at the time, like, hey, uh, you can pick me up. I'm drunk at work, <laughs> you know? So two, Okay, so now... Do you, well, this is too personal to ask, but do you have a little wine at home sometimes? Oh, yeah. Think? Oh, yeah, was the answer. Th- this was oh, when I yeah. first started drinking, you realize. When I first started, started out. <laughs> no, it's, <laughs> I, like I said, I had no breakfast. Usually I can handle it. But, yes, I love wine. Wine is you my wine. absolute Do you prefer favorite. red or Red. Uh, okay. Have you heard of Contessa? That's my favorite I sure wine have. in the world. Contessa. Hey, Scott, maybe next week we could have some Contessa. Yeah. Oh, so um, then you'll start drinking. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know what? If we switch to we have Tuesdays, wine here I'll somewhere. drink the whole show if we're on Tuesday. But what? I think I have wine here. No, no. If you think you have wine here, that means it's old. <laughs> Do you mean open already? I no, don't no. want to talk to you anymore. No, I ha- we have to tell them. That- All right, back to the story. Back to your story, Mercedes. Yes. On the talk tale show on the Vegas Video Network. <laughs> tell us, when you were going to school. Now, you've recently gone back to school. Yes. That was, was it to go back where you started and left for radio? Well, Same. when I came out here, like I said, I was a junior. And so I just, I, I was offered this job. It was really the opportunity of a lifetime. and I couldn't pass it up. So I dropped out of school. And my dad was very disappointed that I did that. But I said, Dad, I'm going to try to make this work. I'll go back, I promise. So, you know, I went to work and we started to find some success. Mm-hmm. And then I met my husband. And then I had a child. And I thought, Oh, that's right. I never went back to school. Maybe oh, yeah. I should try. And so I applied to UNLV, and I actually got denied the first time. Okay, I why though? Why? My grades okay. were not good. And our producer, JC, said, you couldn't get in at UNLV? Like, it was oh, like, oh, like what is that supposed to mean? <laughs> and so I had to... That's su- terrible. I know. What, I mean, what he said, not what you said. <laughs> and so I, they said, you can contest it, and what we need is two letters of recommendation, and um, a letter Y, and I explained, you know, I, I wasn't appreciating the education at first, so I asked Oscar Goodman, who was the mayor oh. at the time, could you write me a letter of recommendation? Now, right there, they should have said, how smart are you, and like to write in. I also asked George Maloof oh. to write me a letter of recommendation. 
And they both did. And shortly thereafter, I said, I got a letter that said, you've been accepted. So they you're, let me give it a try. That's great. Yeah. And, so. she, and now you're, you went through the whole process, right? I did. I graduated in May, cum laude. So I, I approved my grade. So. <laughs> Strong, powerful woman. Yeah, I, I really, I turned it around. And I appreciated it this time. I, I really think that. You know, if anyone's ever thinking about going back to school or you're too afraid that you're too old to. Yeah. I remember the old people in my class, and I was just like, oh, my gosh, don't talk to me. And I thought it was going to be the same thing. When you the say kids, the old people, what? I'm the old person in the class. No. Yeah, no. I am. They're all 18, 19, and 20, and here I am 30. Uh, uh, oh. you know, so uh, I was the old person. But when, when you were in the class, when I, the old people were in the class, when you were the young person, yeah. younger. Yes. How old were those people? I would guess about 80. <laughs> I you know, know she thought that one through. But she thought, how old is Kelly? And how old is Scott? No, no, but they Sorry, were so Scott. great. <laughs> Bringing you down with me, baby. Bringing you down. OK, so, so it was kind of awkward at first for you in the class? It was intimidating, because yeah. it's changed a lot. You know, when I was in school the first time, we <laughs> typed things on our typewriters <laughs> now it's all computer yeah. you have web classes where you don't even show up to a class it's all online and so it's a whole new way of doing things it's really wow. but it, it was great I wouldn't have changed it for the world there's so many amazing professors at UNLV it was incredible I had a did really it take a long time or did it we took me to... five years to do it yeah working exactly yeah but it was great I had a, a great time I'm thinking about going back for my master's now actually that, so. I'm so we'll impressed see. with you I'm actually almost I was thinking about reading a book, right? You now. should come with me. We should do it together. <laughs> I, I might just pretty much, who knows, do that. All right, guess what? We have a live chat question okay. from Mercedes. Who, who is it, Scott? Uh, we want to know what, uh, what you got your degree in. We missed that. Oh, uh, this time around, I got my degree in communication studies, which. Did I, you say co communication? I obviously <laughs> did not do very well in that aspect. But um, yeah, communication studies. Uh, uh, we, were, we were hoping for the pharmaceutical thing. No. <laughs> Sorry. We're out of Ambien again. Can you help? <laughs> Yeah, 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 it's Ambien. That. Yeah, we're shooting for Ambien. Yeah, let's go with that Right? One. Well, yeah. <laughs> now, it, uh, okay, do the guys, are the guys at work respecting you even more now that you have your degree? Uh, no. No, not no. at all. Still, did not. <laughs> no, they were really supportive because there were times I'd come in just burnt. I, I yeah. had class till 10 o'clock at night, and then I had to do the show the next day, and they were so understanding and really supportive about it. It was, it was so awesome of them. So you're, you're truly very good friends. Yeah. Yes, All we are. Of you. Absolutely. On the air and off. Yeah, we don't hang out a lot off the air because we kind of want to, we don't want to live the same life and right. only talk about, you know, that one thing. So it's nice to have different kind of lifestyles that we right. can all contribute to the show. So. And then it's spontaneous. Yeah. And there's all these things you share. Now, I, listening to the show the last few days, last week and this week, well, today, um, I, I noticed that you have all these things like, the Daily Dirt. Yes. Right? You have a lot of That's cool a, the things. entertainment and gossip right? feature, what's going on, the celebrities, things like that. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, and then I, I caught some of the topics that you also say, well, let's talk about this. Not, not so much in the entertainment news, but okay. you bring things up like one night stands. I think, was that today? There was, yes, there was okay. a story, a new sex survey came out that said, um, I think 14% of people, no, it's got to be more than that. 44% of people have had a one night right. stand. Something like that? Yeah. So we all went around the room to ask who did. <laughs> yeah. And some people evaded the answer. And the, but but this, who, whose idea is it, to, whose subject, uh, the subject matter of these topics? Like there was a, a role playing thing to, in relation, uh, relations outdoors? Yes. That, sexual well, relations that outdoors. That whole survey was part of a, a feature we have on our show called The Hot Three. And so we picked like okay. the, the hottest three stories of the day and just boom, 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 hit all three of them. And some of them go into topics. Others, you know, you just read it and let people, you know, hear what's going on and that's about it. So that was one of the stories and, for our hot three. And I like if or there was something on last week about, uh, about being late for a first date. Is it okay? Right. And I loved hearing your take on that. As a woman, I, I really enjoyed your perspective, your point of view. Well, my take is that... Uh, uh, you should never be late for a date, but it's going to happen sometimes. Right. I understand that. And so if it's a, a dire emergency, I, I get it. But I don't ever think a guy should be late and leave a woman just sitting there waiting for him. Right. I think. If, right? Thank you. 
That's the My I, husband's grandstanding. He's the one who started the clap. He's like <laughs> the slow clap. Yeah. Too. Uh, but uh, if the woman's late and the guy is waiting, I think that's okay as long as it's no more than uh, <laughs> as long as it's no more than ten minutes. Well, well that, after that, that's rude. I, you know, she's saying though that I mean, and I have been there where you're you're the one waiting, and and the guy. I don't know why I don't look at a guy sitting there when he's alone, and go, boy, the poor thing. The yeah. girl's not, I, but a girl, you could see her kind of looking around and that. And, it, and it's awkward, and you feel like a dork. Well, and then you see when she looks towards the door and someone walks yeah. in and her eyes get all big. And, oh. <laughs> hey, just so you know, yeah. we, we, we have feelings, too. Yeah. All the men in here now are kind of going, but, but what about us? <laughs> and then they're saying, she's right, we don't care. <laughs> No, okay. no, Kenny's like, like no. what about us? And I'm like this, and Jacob's like this. And, Kenny wasn't and even listening. <laughs> <laughs> That's his take right now. Okay, now you, so some of the, I love that. It's your point of view, and, and I agree with you. Thank you. 100% of the time. Okay, maybe not. I know. But what I've heard, I liked, I, I liked it a lot. Thank you. Um, uh, you've also, uh, I read an article where it says you, sometimes share from your own life, your, you and your husband is Matt, right? Yes. And you kind of will ch tell the story about, say, an argument or a disagreement or a subject matter. And I told him that when we met. I said, I have to give you the, you know, here's your pass to get out of this if you don't want to sign up for this, but my life mm -hmm. goes on the radio. And if you have a problem with that, it's, you know, I don't want you to go, but I understand if you go. And he said, no, I'll, you know, I'll sign up for that. And there's been times, believe me, where oh, yeah, he's we're... not been happy with me. But at, he's really a good sport, and he, he gets he's it. He's a good guy. He's he, amazing. There's yeah. something that struck me in, in this article that, where you shared uh, uh, the, how you balance your home life and your momhood and your wife. Food. You didn't actually say those things, but I'm, anyway, and you said uh, that it, to balance in the romance part of your life yes. with Matt, you said that you agreed to, you know, do certain things in some way, shape, or form three times a week. And a lot of people, <laughs> and the slow clap comes from this side of the room this time. A lot of people think that's that's bad because oh, you know, there's no spontaneity and you <laughs> schedule things. But I think that if you don't say three times a week, and it, you know, it doesn't have to be everything, right. but I, show affection at least three times a week. Like take time and be affectionate with right. each other, and you know it. It really works. I mean, we are still just as tight as we were when we got married. And so it's that works for us. It may not work for everyone else. But yes, we have a, our three-a-week rule. I, I, think I admire it very much. And I said to Clint in the car yesterday, I shared that piece of information. And, and then I said, so I guess we're going to have to slow down if it's only going to be three times a week. <laughs> that, see, that's the right way to do it. I like that. That's, I, we should up our number a little bit. And when you say affection, you mean like this, right? No. Okay. All right. So we have another live chat question, Scott. Who, I just surveyed have? all the men in the room. <laughs> oh, they all chatted in together. And uh, all of a sudden, our opinion of her has changed quite a <laughs> oh, bit. No. They like her quite a bit more now. Oh, okay, good. Oh, good. It's gotten a lot better. And I don't think it's just this. <laughs> <laughs> Unless we're trying to tell somebody to steal second. <laughs> okay, was that the question? Yes. All right, we're moving on. <laughs> All right, just a few more questions. I know you got a lot of things to do, but are you a girly girl? You I, know what I mean by that, right? I'm, I'm really not. It, it's, I am very much into sports. I'm a huge baseball fan. Mm -hmm. I, my idea of fun is like going to check out a game or to NASCAR or something. Oh. But I do like to dress up. I, I like that part of it, but I, I like to get dirty. I like to go and do like dirty stuff. Not that kind of thing. <laughs> but you know what I mean. I hope they don't just use that sound bite. <laughs> right? No. I like to get dirty. Watch our show on Vegas Video Network. No, but we right away when we, we first met today, you know, I was like, oh, I love your dress. And you're like, oh, my God, you're beautiful. We talked about how we're trying to keep up with, you know, the fashions when you do these special events. Like, I'm going to bring up a special event you did just a few months ago, and Clint was, was there and saw you. But 
It was the uh, Vegas Dozen, right? Right, right for you Sex Fifth Avenue, uh, Sex Fifth Avenue, and, and Vegas Magazine, and they honor twelve guys in the Vegas community every year. And yeah, I've been the host for the past three years. It's that, been a that's, lot of fun. That's great. Yeah, I mean, and and he said, "What a great host she oh, is." Oh, thank and you. How you kept it going and all the preparation, like we talked about earlier. It's easy when you have. I mean, there's so many. I know Clinch was given that honor a few years yes. back, and there's just so many great guys. It's fun to do research yeah. on stuff like that. <laughs> so along with that honor, you always have to look good, right? So we're always picking a new dress or, or a new outfit, and you have to think about, what did I wear this last time? Right. And people take photos, or there's all the internet and social media now. How do you keep up with all that? Uh, there was a, a website, and I was telling you about it. You have to get on it. It's called Rue La La, and it's... Uh, an invite only, like only another member can invite you to okay. be a part of it. So I'll send you one. Um, She's gonna hook me up. Uh, but it's it's like designer dresses and uh, just not just dresses. It's all sorts of things, and you can get it for like eighty percent off the retail price. So. We love that, right, yeah. ladies? Yeah, yeah. I, I get that stuff all the time. I gotta do that. Yeah, I mean, it's, and also I was thinking I need a sponsorship here on the show. What do you think of that, Scott? Once again, not the, listening. No, the men have voted again, and we still really like Mercedes. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, I'm definitely, I wanted to accept that invite from you. Yeah. And, and, and also search for a sponsor. For, someone needs to be yeah, dressing you. This every, is a show that everyone is watching. You need to have watching. someone dressing her, for sure. But when you say you want a sponsor, does that mean you just want somebody to dress you? Well, no, I, I mean, we, need, we want sponsors anyway, but I mean, it would be great if someone like, Mr. Saks Fifth Avenue, I'm sure that's his name. Yeah. You know, or, or like wardrobe brought Bill to you Sachs. by Nordstrom. By Nordstrom's, or what's the other one? A Neiman Marcus. Yes. And you could show the latest right? fashions. You'd right? be a trendsetter. That's yeah. Let's work on this together. I'll be your. I'll, I'll be help your guy. you. You help me. You <laughs> scratch my back. Uh oh, Scott's getting weird. Okay. Weird. Okay. All right. All right. A couple more questions. I know. I know. We've already passed the time limit, Scott. Yeah. Okay. Can I just say this? Donny Osmond. Oh, you know I any love Donny him. Osmond? Uh -huh. I love him. He, he, he um, but I met him when I was a little girl. We were staying at a hotel in Northern California, and um, my dad was there for work. I think I was like eight years old, and we found out the Osmonds were staying at the at that hotel. So I took my little brother, who's in a diaper, and we knocked on every single room in that hotel until I found <laughs> his room. <laughs> And uh, like his handler opened the door and I said, is Donny Osmond in this room? And he said, he is, little girl, but I'm sorry, he's really busy. But Donny heard him and he said, no, it's okay, let her in. So me and my little brother with his diaper on, he signs an autograph and oh, he's so sweet. Cool. And then I, he said, no, why don't you go see Marie? She's two doors down from me. And so then I went to her. Oh. And it was so great. Mother, sister, And right? he remembered that story when I saw him at the Vegas Does. And I said, do you remember? I, I'm sure you don't. It was several years ago. He said, I absolutely remember that. How cool so, is that? Yeah, How he's cool a great Johnny? guy. I love him. And he hasn't changed at all. No, He I looks agree. exactly the same. I know I was totally in love with Donnie, and, and, and it was at the time it was, well, you're younger than me, but the, the Osmonds against the Jacksons, not against, but they were the competition. Really? Yeah, I, I, I didn't. This is before her time. No. Right. Really, <laughs> Grandma? No. <laughs> you don't remember that? Right? I remember when it was like uh, Donnie and Marie had the show together. Okay, that's later on. Yeah, and then uh, Jimmy, there was the littlest brother. Little who was, Jimmy. Yeah, I remember him. He's now like a big producer. Where is he? I, I, I think he's like behind the scenes in his own business and probably Osmond business. Oh. But I, I mean, call me, Donnie, if I'm wrong. Call me. My number is 702. I'm kidding. <laughs> anyway, this has been a pleasure. Do you know any Osmond music? Well, we could put, think of anything. Or even Down by the Lazy River. What's that? Puppy love. Hey. <laughs> We'll have Donnie on, but we'll know the I'm song. I'm pretty sick of this entire staff, just so you know that. How about a great big thank you to Mercedes <laughs> Martinez for being our guest today. You are a joy, thank and you, you are beautiful, and we're proud, and, and it's great to hear you in the morning and see you right here in person. Such a beautiful person. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you. So much fun. And you are so much fun. Thank Congratulations you. on this. You guys are awesome. Thank you. You're cool, too, back there. You're cool, too, Scott. <laughs> thank
Thank you. We'll see you next week on Talk Tales. Mercedes!